Hello dear violinists, welcome to Prime Strings. My name is Henriette and today it is day 9 of the Learn to Play Suzuki Violin Volume 2 course. Today we are learning to play the Bure by Handel, which you can find in Volume 2, page 15. And we, this is about a combination of legato and martelet bowing. So we'll be looking at the techniques used in this piece as well. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so now and hit the bell button so I can update you whenever Lesson 10 is released. Let's go ahead and get started and let's play you the tuning notes first. is written in the key of G major and we're going to practice the G major scale just so we get used to the finger pattern in this piece and we're going to use a bowing technique that we use in this piece as well um, and I'll show you how we're going to play the G major scale so we're going to start at the point this time and we're going to play and shoot off the first note and then play a long one So you're going to shoot off the string your first bow and then come down on the leg So let's practice that a few times shall we? So I'm squeezing the bow and I'm lifting the bow out of the string and I come down into the string. We're just stopping the bow for a moment so that we can get our bow hand to squeeze into the string. We're starting up bow on G after three. One, two, three. <coughs> as you will know from earlier lessons we'll repeat the whole arpeggio again. I would like you to try and use this arpeggio also to try and check your violin position, your left hand position and also your bow hold so we can really work on all our postures while we play the arpeggio. After three, one, two, 
a number of bowings and I will show you a picture of my part in a moment and I'd like you to copy all those bowings because we're going to learn it with the different bowings that are in my music. So copy from the picture into your music please and then we'll play it in that way. Now you will notice that my first big difference is that I'm going to be starting down bow in this piece and I'll show you in a moment why that is. Let me just play you the first two lines and then we'll come to talk about it. So we're starting just a little bit away from the point so that we're going to play down bow like that. We're starting after three. One, two, three. There you go. This bow stroke here is the bow that we've practiced on the G major scale a moment ago. And what I'd like you to do is pick up your bow and lift it off the string. So it is a form of a martelet bow stroke in that I'm squeezing my bow and then shooting it off. That's it. And now when you come down on the G, make sure that you land really nicely. Like that. Okay, so what's happening is when I'm shooting off my E, my bow is travelling on through the air and then it's coming down. Closer, 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 closer. And I always compare this to a ski jumper that comes down. And I love watching ski jumping on television because you can clearly see how the skis come closer and closer and closer to the snow. And then eventually you hope that they have a really soft landing. Otherwise the ski jumper will smash their knees, of course. And it's just the same as what you do on your violin right here. You shoot off, fly through the air, come down closer and closer to the string with your bow until you have the softest of landings there. And that's a really good exercise to do. So let's do that a few more times together. So I'm starting at the point, squeeze the bow and shoot it off and, and now come down. At that moment, it's well worth looking at your contact point where the bow is going to hit the strings. Look at the strings, look at it coming closer and you can co coordinate it. And again, squeeze it and come really close. And squeeze it. Fly on through the air, come down closer and closer. 
Oh, so the smoother that landing is, the better it is. Now you have a soft landing because you come quite slowly here with your bow. But then I want you to increase the speed of the bow. So let's practice that this time. So we're going to go on the E string, squeeze the bow and shoot it off. Fly through the air, come closer and closer, a very gent gentle landing. And now increase the bow speed. You might have noticed that underneath that G in your music, it has a crescendo. So we're going to go louder. Now, let's now put the whole first line together because this up bow shooting off off the strings comes again later on in this line. So I'm going to go from the beginning. So I'm starting not far from the point and we're going to go down bow, two, three. crescendo so you may go slower with your bow because it should be really soft right here so let's play those two notes again shall we we're starting on B shoot it off and and I land gently and softly you go all the way to the point of the bow all the way to the point of the bow there lovely job let's do it one more time Pick up your bow, all the way to the point of the bow, get really quiet here, oh beautiful, whilst you play this two times with a very similar bowing, the bowing isn't exactly the same because on the top G here, you increase the speed of the bow and on the low G here, you play much more gently on the bow, okay? Now, when we continue from here, we're going to go from the point on the A. Now, there are a couple of things that are happening here. First of all, we had an up bow on the A. And now I'm playing softly at the upper half of the bow. But as you can see, there is a crescendo. So I'm gradually going to make my bow strokes longer. Until that is my loudest note. Let's practice that from bar five again, shall we? So we're starting with shorter bow strokes. And every next bow stroke is going to be a little bit longer than its predecessor. From bar five.
circle at the end of line two and that indicates that I'm going to lift my bow up and retake it but I'm not going to go as close to the point of the bow as I was at the very start of this piece because it's mezzo forte here and we're going to go a little bit more generous than down bow. Two, three. similarities in techniques between the first two lines and the second half but the, the bits with the commas we'll just briefly think about. The commas indicate which notes belong to the earlier phrase and which notes belong to the next phrase. You can just see it as a, as a little breather so you can um, group your notes together properly. So I'm going to start on the last note of bar 12 that is an up bow, two, three, and you can probably hear that the first section is a tone higher than the second one. Let's try that again, and different phrase and if you'd like to bring that out that gives some more life to your piece. So once you've looked at your phrasing like that you can put it all together. So let's play the repeat of the second section now and I'd like you to really bring out the dynamic markings in this piece. After three. One, two, three. time so when you get to your very end slow it down a little bit and I have got a little thing that I always really love to tell people uh, is to play that last note to its very full length one two three and then diminuendo it at the end it just polishes it off really really nicely I hope you've enjoyed this lesson I wish you much luck with your further practice on this piece and I very much look forward to seeing you again 
in lesson 10. And lesson 10 will be a technical lesson. We'll be doing lots of exercises. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so now. And as always, feel free to write in the comments section because any questions that you ask me there, I will respond to.